Good morning, good afternoon, hello, happy weekend, my photography friends, wherever you are in the world, I hope you're well and safe. Thank you very much for tuning in to my YouTube channel once again. Today, I am going to show you a little bit of new technology that has come along in the Fujifilm GFX100. Now, the GFX100, of course, is a camera that some of you may have, most of you probably want, and many of you definitely don't have. It's quite expensive, but it's a 100 megapixel, medium, large format, however you want to call it, camera from Fujifilm. Now, I invested in that camera purely for my commercial work, and it's been great because some of the work I've needed to do is almost kind of forensic detail of images, so a lot of zooming in, a lot of detail. Now, one of the things that Fujifilm mentioned a few months back was that they were going to bring this technology called Pixel Shift. That's Pixel Shift to the Fujifilm GFX100. And yesterday, on the 24th of November 2020, they released version 3 of the firmware update to the Fujifilm GFX100, which introduced a Pixel Shift technology. I'm not going to hang around too long, we're going to go to the computer, I'm going to show you exactly how it works, what it does. All you need to know is that essentially this will allow you to create 400 megapixel colour correct images in the camera. And it's quite phenomenal, you have to jump through a few hoops, you need to set up the camera of course first, which is very easy, and then you need to take 16, or the camera automatically takes 16 RAW files for you, you then bring them into your computer and you'd need to download the Fujifilm software that they've created which will blend those images. And I'll go through all of that with you in a moment. Now, of course, many of you will be thinking, why on earth would you want 400 megapixel images? And to be totally honest with you, I will probably never need them. However, I think there is an application for this. For example, forensic photography, medical photography. If you need something that needs to be very wide, you go on a billboard. These images are coming out at over 23,000 pixels wide and they are sharp and they are color correct. So for those of you that just want to see it in action, we're going to get into it now. And I will tell you that the next video I'm going to do next week is going to be a full edit of a complete wedding. So if you're into wedding photography and you want to see me do that, then make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the like button and all of that good stuff. Okay, let's get into Lightroom and the technology. Okay, so here we are. You can see 16 RAW files here. These are the ones that the Pixel Shift technology generated when I shot this. And you'll see that if I look at the properties, these are just standard RAW files. They're 110 megabytes. That's pretty normal for a GFX 100 camera. Now you're going to need the firmware for version 3. Uh, you just head over to the Fujifilm website here. Download the firmware for the GFX 100. And then the other thing you need is the Pixel Shift Combiner software. You're going to need this to combine those RAW files. Again, on the Fujifilm website, you can see Windows Mac versions, uh, 8, 16 gig of RAM needed. Just download it, install it. Very, very straightforward. So this is the software, Pixel Shift Combiner. Pretty straightforward. You just browse to the folder that you want your DNGs to go to, and they will be DNGs, so select that. And uh, you can just tether as well if you want I've not tried that so I don't know what that is like you can also save to the same folder uh, select the images all 16 you need to bring in and it will automatically start combining those images for you now on my computer this takes around about 45 to 50 seconds for a standard import uh, like I said 16 raw files they will be pixel shifted and it's now generating a DNG file When it's finished, it will say completed with a nice little tick next to it. Uh, if we go to the folder where the DNG has been outputted, there it is, DNG, and have a look at the size of that file, you'll see that it is enormous, 1.37 gigabytes. Uh, DNG file only, can't export it as anything else, has to be a DNG, so if you want a TIFF, you're gonna need to take it into Lightroom or Capture One or something like that. A cool thing about the software though is that you can actually just set them all to go one after the other. So I've imported, I think, nine sets or 16 uh, raw files into this now, and it's just going to go ahead and do them all one after the other. It doesn't one after the other. It doesn't do them uh, concurrently, but you can just do that. Go and have a cup of tea.
Now when all those DNGs are generated, it's time to head over to Lightroom and import those files. So you can see that I have uh, 12 actually, 12 uh, files, all ranging between 1.3 and 1.5 gigabytes. You might need a bit of a beefy computer, so we'll just drag them into Lightroom. And it's going to ask me to import those images, which I will do. I'm actually going to just hit add and import. And away we go, start bringing those in right now. So let's look at some images and see what we've got, do some editing, all that kind of stuff. So this is a obviously a standard image of a X100V, my Fujifilm X100V. And for all intents and purposes, this currently just looks like a regular GFX100 image, which of course is very good in its own right. But if you look at the details in the top left hand side, you'll see that the pixel dimension is 23,296 by 17,472. And that's quite large. So I was shooting an aperture priority. So letting the camera choose the uh, shutter speed. And that was at F5, um, 0.8 of a second. So 23,000 by 17,000 pixels. Okay, let's zoom in to the focus point. So this is where I was focusing. And this is, this is where you're gonna start seeing all of the dust and debris on my cameras. But look at that detail. That is just incredible. Uh, you can see the dust on the EVF, or sorry, on the viewfinder. You can see a bit of damage on the top where I've cracked it. Uh, it's quite amazing. So let's just do some edits. I'm just going to auto upright it. I'm going to hit one of my film simulation presets here. And maybe we will crop it just to straighten it a little bit. And might just pull up the shadows slightly. And so Lightroom's handling these files pretty good. Now I do have a computer that's, you know, pretty powerful. However, it's doing it. It's not, no problems with it whatsoever. And now you're going to see me using these presets throughout. And these are my own Lightroom. They're profile based presets. So in the top right hand side there, you can see KM Film Color Base. Now, because it is a Black Friday digital Monday, whatever they call it, when this is going to go live, I'm going to give you, just you guys, especially on YouTube, an extra special discount, if you so wish. You can get the link below for the presets. And if you use my special YouTube code, which is YTNOV20, you're going to get an extra 10% off. Now, bear in mind, they're at 50% already. So extra 10% off using the code YTNOV20. Okay, so some some of my favorite books here. I'll see the X100V there for context at the front. Just going to add a little bit of clarity there on the left-hand side under the density element. And if we zoom in, oh, actually let's pop the exposure up a little bit and then zoom in to the words on the book. You'll, you'll need to let Lightroom render it slightly. It's going to take a moment. But when it's there, again, look at those details. That's just incredible. Now, of course, you're not going to be using this for everyday photography, but for those of you that need this kind of detail, I think it's it's pretty much incredible, absolutely incredible. So this one's 22,759 pixels. Okay, let's have a look at this. This is from a book, as you can see, and I'm just going to straighten it. So this is text, which is quite interesting because I think some people might use this kind of technology for archival. So I'm just going to put the standard black and white, my standard black and white on there. And let's have a look. Whoa, Whew, look at that. That is pretty insane, I think. Um, yeah, so very, very detailed uh, text there. I think that this might be useful for people who are kind of cataloging artwork, uh, documents, all that kind of stuff. Perhaps they might need this. So just going to do some sharpening in here so we can see what that looks like, what the effects have. So it's going to sharpen, over sharpen it there and you can just see the end of the letters that are kind of coming in a little bit. So I'll drag the detail right back down and yeah, you can see that there. You can see that quite clearly. So you need to get the right element on the sharpening dialogue for text at least. Pretty good though. Just going to Add a little bit of clarity there as well so we get a little bit of detail in the background and yeah very cool okay talking about artwork here's a uh one of my favorite posters one of my favorite singers Tens van zandt god rest his soul uh picture on my wall uh, just going to white balance it a little bit 
and straighten it again. So this is on the 63 mil f2.8 lens. There's just a little bit of light coming in from the left hand side, but look at the text. So the text and the bottom, this is what we're interested in. So if I zoom in, let Lightroom do its rendering. And again, you can see all of that. You can even see the, the ink spills at the end of the, the letters. I think that's quite incredible. Quite incredible indeed, actually. Now, if we go up onto the wall, you're even going to see things like little bits of hair that have been stuck in the painting uh, when we painted the studio. Um, but yeah, all of that detail is really quite amazing. Okay, sticking with the music theme, let's see what we've got down here. <laughs> my, my trusty old record player. Now, I can already see, look at that dust and grime. Oof, that is gross. Uh, I really need to clean that stylus up. But uh, yeah, look at the detail again on that. That is quite phenomenal. 63 mil lens again. Uh, just white balance this a little bit first. Uh, what should we do with this one? Straighten it maybe. Will that do anything? Mm, a little bit. Happy with that. I think let's have a look at the film simulation. Mullins film color clean. I might just go up to add a little bit of punch. There we go, just to give a bit of clarity there. Drag the shadows up a little bit and I think it's a bit warm. So I'm gonna drag the temperature down and let's go in again. Wait for Lightroom to do its thing. Woof, look at that. That is pretty grim, I have to say. Um, <laughs> quite embarrassing, frankly. I don't use my record player that often, nowhere near enough. But that's quite amazing, isn't it? That detail there on the stylus, I think is really phenomenal. Okay, and to the record itself, let's see what we can do with this. Now, uh, I focused on the text of the LP. So this is a Guy Clark record, another one of my favorite singers. God rest his soul as well, sadly. And we'll white balance it. And we zoom in, let Lightroom render. There we go, Guy Clark. And you can see the text, you can see the grain on the label. You can see everything on there. That's pretty incredible also. So this is at F5, so you can see even at F5, the depth of field is challenging. So you need to get that right. And uh, you definitely don't want to be using things that are moving. So let's just put the classic warm tone on there, just to see what it looks like. And yeah, pretty good. I'm going to undo that actually. I'm not really sure about that. So maybe we will go for color. Why not? Yeah, why not? Okay, what else have we got? Uh, okay, another one of the X100F in this case, a little bit more battered than my X100V. I'm just gonna straighten it up. And the focal point was on the label on the camera. So I'm actually gonna do the processing first, I think. Uh, let's try Chrome, no, let's go for color clean. I really like that warm tone. So uh, I'm gonna put the density on it straight away and I'm gonna pop the subtle edges on as well. A little bit of vignette. And let's see what we have when we zoom in here. There we go. So again, you can see all of the texture, the damage, the dust, the filth. <laughs> I really need to clean my stuff. Um, but yeah, that's quite impressive, isn't it? I think, yes, yeah, F2.8 uh, on the 63 mil 2.8 GFX lens. So yeah, look at that detail. Again, you know, for this, it's irrelevant if you're printing that or maybe billboarding it, you need to do some forensic photography. This is where it's all gonna be great. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's just pretty impressive. Okay. Okay, so here we've got all of my X100s, one on top of each other. X100 at the bottom, signed by Masasan, the designer, X100 S, T, F, and V. Uh, some of them in a little bit better condition than the others. I dare think what happens when we zoom in on these. Uh, okay, focus point was here on the uh, shutter speed dial. And again, you can see, look at the, look, <laughs> look at the hot shoe. Look at the filth in there. Uh, keep your hot shoe caps on, folks. Um, yeah, that's, that's quite amazing as well. Okay, let's just stick a preset on there, Mullins preset. And uh, there we go, nice warm film look. Again, I'll give it a little bit of punch. And I'm gonna just press the raw standard sharpening to automate this uh, sharpening. Pull the shadows up a little bit. 
and have a look at that again as it renders yeah look at that oh my word i really 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 need to start cleaning this stuff <laughs> it's much loved though much loved much used cameras so yeah there we go that's incredible i think absolutely amazing so i think the next thing we want to probably do is look at uh, exporting because this is an important part of it so let's export this particular one and I'm just going to drop it in anywhere it doesn't matter what the names are or anything like that now this is the important thing tiff files are going to give you the biggest size uh, I've, i would zip them up i'll give it a zip um, compression 16-bit tiff uh, i'm not going to sharpen this because i did sharpen it in lightroom itself i'm going to export it and it's going to take a little bit of a while for this to happen but when it comes it will be there and I want to see how big this TIFF file is because this is the file that you will be Dropboxing, we transfer into your printers. 1.62 gigabytes. Whew. Big file, but big quality. Okay, there you go. So that's the GFX 100 pixel shift technology. I think it's pretty insane, to be totally honest with you. Now, the GFX 100, of course, is quite an expensive camera, although I think it's very reasonably priced. And I think that if you are into that kind of detail, that kind of level, and you need to print very big, or you need to do any kind of commercial photography that needs that detail, product photography, for example, high-end magazine work, could be something for you to look at. Now, of course, one of the things I mentioned while we were on the computer is that you will need to keep the camera very still and the subject needs to be very still as well. So you're not gonna be using this on street photography and also landscape photography will be quite tricky because the, you know, the scenery might move, the trees might move, the clouds might move. Um, you'll get away with it and you will get some good images, but it's gonna be something that will will kind of come with trial and error, I think, and, you, and you'll understand it when you use the, the technology properly. All right, my friends, thank you once again for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe, all of that good stuff. I will link to my presets that you saw me use in the video below. I hope you have a very happy day. I hope you have a very happy weekend coming ahead. And don't forget, next week, I will be doing a complete edit of a wedding. So make sure you tune in then. Take care.